With the new M2 Pro and M2 Max MacBooks coming right around the corner in 2023, should you still consider picking one up or should you hold off? Hey, what's up? Today, I wanted to take a look at Apple's certified refurbished 14 inch M1 Max MacBook Pro that I picked up the other week to answer one question. Is it worth it? But before we do, a like and a sub to the channel would go a really long way. We only started this channel just seven months ago, so it's just wild to me that we've hit 11,000 subscribers in those seven months, and the support that you guys have shown me has just been absolutely incredible. It just means the world how far we've gotten, and all of that is just thanks to every single one of you. So thank you so much for watching, subscribing, and just being there for all of the content that I've posted on this channel. Anyways, a little bit of some backstory. I saw a video from Andres Vidoza about a 14 inch MacBook Pro and it kind of set off a light bulb in my head. I just recently picked up the M1 Ultra Mac Studio for this channel, but it kind of felt like I had overindulged just a little bit. It was an investment is what I kept telling myself, but the truth is it was just complete overkill for what I needed to do with this channel. I was coming from a PC that I had built with an i9-12900KS and an RTX 3080 Ti, and I just wanted something with a little less distractions that I can rely on and something that was a little more streamlined for my workflow. Anyways, the video that Andres made, which I'll link after this video, got me really interested in downgrading the Mac Studio, saving a little bit of money, but also getting something that was going to be a little more practical to me. So I decided to go for the M1 Max 10 core CPU, 24 core GPU, 14 inch MacBook Pro. Now I decided to purchase mine from Apple Certified Refurbished and the reason I did this is because with Apple Certified Refurbished you still get the one year manufacturer warranty like you would on a brand new Apple product. You also still get the ability to purchase Apple Care Plus which I did since this is like a work computer and it's still something I really need to rely on. The thing about certified refurbished is that it's quite literally brand new, brand new battery, chassis, display. There's nothing about the laptop that screams refurbished. When I open it up, the only thing different about the experience is that the box said refurbished rather than having a photo of the MacBook on it. And when it came to cost for this 10 core CPU, 24 core GPU, M1 Max 14 inch MacBook Pro, I paid $3,199 Canadian dollars. If I was buying this from Apple directly, it would have been $3,899. So I saved about 800 Canadian dollars buying this directly from Apple's certified refurbished website. That's a lot of money. After taxes, that's almost a thousand dollars. You're saving a lot of money going with Apple certified refurbished and for what you're getting, it's an insane value, which is why in my opinion, it was a no brainer. I haven't seen a discount on these laptops. These laptops have not been on sale for as much as they are on their certified counterpart. And in fact, I haven't seen the M1 Max variants of these laptops on sale at all, which is why as soon as I saw these laptops go on the certified refurbished website, it kind of got the gears ticking in my brain and it's what made me really heavily consider purchasing one. But now that we got the reason why I chose to purchase refurbished out of the way, let's talk about why I chose this machine and why I decided not to wait until the Apple M2 Pro and Max. It's already been confirmed that the M2 Pro and Max series of chips are not going to be getting any sort of physical changes to the chassis just a spec bump, meaning things like ports and display and keyboards won't be changed on the laptop. Display brightness could be changed perhaps, but the actual laptop itself will be left untouched aside from the SOC it's running on. And if we've looked at past MacBooks, this makes a lot of sense. Apple's left some chassis untouched for years at a time. However, in this case, with the M2 Pro and M2 Max, I'm sure it'll be a decent improvement, though it won't be large enough for me to consider upgrading the M1 Max. That's the thing, this is already more than enough for what I do. Overall though, even a year later, the value of these laptops is still unbeatable. When it comes to the 14 inch though, what I gained versus what I lost is a completely different story. I've always been a desktop person. I found myself to be most productive sitting at a desk in a dedicated working space, but 
I still always find myself having a secondary device like an iPad or a laptop to do things like email, script writing, or managing the channel when I'm away from the desk is always the most convenient. Though the problem that I've always run into with doing this is parity. Apps, performance, and whatever tasks I was doing across those devices were never really one to one and it made it hard at times when going back and forth to the point where I'd almost always just tackle everything at the desk, which kind of made it a burden because I found myself sitting at the desk for most hours of the day. Being home all of the time now and not having the freedom that I had had has made that really difficult for me because my home has kind of turned into my workspace and it's made it hard to not get out of the office and separate my living space from my working area. So having that one device that does it all allows me to better get things done without being cooped up in that one spot throughout my day to day, which is really nice. And when I wanna plug it in and sit at the desk, I can with that one Thunderbolt 4 cable to that studio display and it provides better power and data to all of my peripherals automatically. Things like my audio interface, my keyboard, my mouse, and my XLR microphone are already automatically detected by my Mac and it's like I'm right back to work as if I never left my Mac studio in the dust. However, when I'm unplugged, I get a 14 inch beautiful Liquid Retina XDR ProMotion display, a pretty decent 1080p camera suitable for FaceTime or any meetings, a really great backlit keyboard for writing emails or typing out these scripts, and a large trackpad which I really like to see. Nothing about this form factor is uncomfortable though, and that's why I personally chose the 14 inch this time around after having hands on with the 16 inch previously. I found that for a laptop, it was really hard to make use of it around the house or to travel with it as it was really heavy and cumbersome. It was just inconvenient though, that large display is really helpful if you're very serious when it comes to your workflow and I know you'll definitely know if you'll need it. The speakers on the 14 inch are also amazing, not that I'll really use them that often if I'm being honest, but they're really good and I can see them filling a small room. I can see myself using them if I'm in the kitchen cooking a meal while I'm watching a video or something, but that's pretty much it. Pretty much all of the listening that I'll be doing on the laptop is gonna be at the desk while I'm using the studio display speakers or my AirPods, or if I'm in bed or something. So I doubt that I'll ever really take advantage of the speakers, but they're there and they sound really good. Another benefit over the previous Intel-based Macs you get with the new Pros is the port selection. On both the 14 and the 16 inch, the IO is the same, so you won't feel left out no matter which one you choose. You get three Thunderbolt 4 ports, an SD card slot, an HDMI 4 port, a headphone jack, and MagSafe for power. Now, when compared to the six Thunderbolt 4 ports on the M1 Ultra Max Studio I had, as well as the additional two USB Type A's and the 10 gigabit ethernet, this doesn't really seem like a lot, but when I'm using this at my setup with all of the peripherals, I will be using a dock to my studio display, so I always have the option to add any additional Thunderbolt docks and accessories as well as the studio display does give me an additional three USB-C ports, so it's not a big deal. The biggest elephant in the room though is performance, something that I have not yet to mention between the M1 Ultra inside the Mac Studio and the M1 Max inside the MacBook Pro. And truthfully, it's really because there isn't much of a difference. In my case, I use Premiere for video editing and Photoshop for thumbnails when it comes to this channel. As far as my workflow goes, at the moment, that's about as much as I'm stressing these machines. I'm shooting in 4K 30fps on my Sony a7C, and I don't play around too much with LUTs or picture profiles too much, and the actual image is coming straight out of the camera. So when it comes to performance within Premiere, both the M1 Ultra and the M1 Max MacBook Pro smash it. The M1 Max has 400 gigabytes memory bandwidth, whereas the M1 Ultra has 800. Now, this helps a lot when it comes to scrubbing the timeline and recalling data quickly. The thing is, 400 is already a lot. DDR4 at 3200 mega transfers per second is most likely what's inside of your desktop PC if you're using a Windows computer or a Windows laptop. And that is roughly 25 gigabytes a second. 
That means that the memory inside the M1 Max is 16 times faster. That's a lot. And that's just because the SOC and the memory, they just talk to each other quicker because of this ARM process. And that's what Apple's been able to accomplish with these laptops. That's what makes these computers so special. That's why it's so hard to evaluate these computers from like a benchmark perspective, because a lot of this stuff literally just seems like magic. And when it comes to the Ultra, realistically, it's just too fast for me. Yeah, everyone wants a better computer, but I honestly cannot take advantage of it. The Ultra is not meant for people like me. The Ultra is meant for people who have a much heavier workload. I don't really notice a difference between the two for what I do. I can't push the computer enough to genuinely be able to justify the price that it cost. So in my case, I'm glad with the choice that I made getting the MacBook instead of the Ultra. And that even becomes apparent when it comes to render times because with the M1 Max MacBook, my videos only take two to four minutes to render in Premiere. Two to four minutes is not a long time at all to wait for a video to finish exporting. That's nothing. I'm a PC guy. I've built dozens of PCs this year alone and I never thought I'd switch to a Mac let alone a laptop for any sort of heavy workflow. But when you put it into plain text, it's no wonder why a lot of creators choose to use these Apple M1 laptops, especially even the M1 Pros or even the 2020 M1 base MacBook Pros. What Apple has done with these laptops is mind blowing and it's no wonder they're as popular as they are even to this day. So to answer my original question, is it still worth picking up one of these even though the M2 series chips are right around the corner? Absolutely, with the right deal, if you can still find them on the Apple refurbished website for a really good deal, it's a no-brainer. These things are going to be way more than what you need. Even if you have a heavy workflow, the M1 Max is just going to crush it. So 100%, if you can find one, if you have the budget for it, absolutely pick one of these things up because you're going to be surprised with the amount of performance that you can squeeze out of this thing. Anyways, that's been it. Thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, drop a like down below, subscribe for more content, and I'll see you all in the next one. Peace out.